Dark Star Masters 2024 highs and lows. Highs and lows. We're sitting here on Tuesday, still soaking in all the events from the previous weekend and Thursday, Friday rounds. And one thing really is inescapable to us. One thing sticks out. One thing is not like the others. And that would be when the tournament was actually decided. And I'm going to come to you, Dark Star, for that because I know you feel strongly very strongly about this. When was the tournament decided? Was it decided when when DeChambeau hit it in the water on Saturday on 15? No, although that was a horrible no. decision. It, this tournament was decided Tuesday morning mm. when the tee times came out mm -hmm. because and, you gave the best player in the world. And, and I, I, I am going to say that Scheffler is the best player in the world. Is he world number the one? Live, I haven't so, heard that anywhere. Some of the live guys are up there. But Scheffler, the way he commanded and played Augusta, shows he's number one. However, if you gave Verstappen a one-lap lead, mm -hmm. well, then you wouldn't have to run the race. Mm -hmm. What was more impressive, not that Scheffler won by four shots, what was very much more impressive was Aberg, excuse me, Oberg, Fleetwood, Homa, Morikawa, who had the bad weather draw. Huge disadvantage. You know, Oberg was the biggest disadvantage. In my opinion, Oberg played the best of everybody because he came out, unfortunately, on Friday morning and played his remaining holes at three over. In that same stretch, Scheffler played four under, not having to come out in the morning, but finished those very birdieable par fives on the back nine and, you know, the short par three 12th, etc. So th the point that we're making here is, yes, Scheffler, let's not take anything away from Scheffler. Right now, he's playing the best in the world. But the rounds, the, the overall rounds of the chasers were probably more impressive considering where they had to come from and how well they played on Friday morning coming out. Those four guys all had to come out, and they all played, except for Oberg, under par. The problem was, the reason the tournament was decided on Tuesday because of the tee times is because of the fact that by Sunday, they didn't have enough left in the tank to hang in there with Scheffler, who, you know, on Thursday night, he was in the hot tub, relaxing. Yeah. Friday, he got up, had an omelet, relaxed. He had the mental freshness. You look at the way Morikawa played the first seven holes. He could have easily been four Four under, give or take. He made nothing. Scotty, so, Scotty was still in his jammies, Dark Star, with his bunny slippers. Yeah. he had, <laughs> That's what he was doing on Friday morning when DJ and the gang are out there going, what the hell is this? Yeah. Uh, this is no fun. This is no good. It's 47 degrees with the wind chill. And I got to hit the ball to a you know little you know mailbox target on the green and try to do something. And we will talk about the greens being in different condition on Friday morning than they were on Thursday afternoon by requirement, right? You can't not mow them. The grass yeah, we'll, grew. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. But Scheffler teed right. off, uh, just to give the audience here, probably not looking at this as closely as we are, Scheffler's tea time on Friday was one, a comfortable 1.48 p.m. Eastern. 1.48. Basically, 2 o'clock. He was done the day before at, like, when did he get off the course? They were all pushed back. So he got done around dinner time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yes. He was still in the jammies and the slippers watching. He was watching the other guys. So that's another thing. He gets to see what the balls are doing on the greens with the, with the TV. Right. But now, I did not get to watch as much of the Masters as I wished. However, what I will say is Scheffler, knowing that he had a late tea time and was going to get to sleep in and just go through his normal routine on Friday, he stayed at the course late working on his game and practicing. Let's not forget, he's a driven player on top of everything else. So when you give a driven guy who's playing great that big of an advantage, yeah, he was one of, he left the course at dark. He probably had a solid two-hour practice session after his round on top of his normal preparation. So he had just a huge advantage everywhere. And then he sleeps in, gets a good night's sleep, knows he doesn't have to even get to Augusta till 11, 12 o'clock. So, yeah, massive advantage. 
And let's remind everyone where Oberg teed off. <laughs> Um, so DJ, of course, everybody wants to, you know, all the aristocracy wants to get after him. So he teed off dead last on Thursday yeah. uh, and had to come back out on 11, the 11th fairway, just just where you want to be in the first shot of the day. Yeah, looking at the lake with a five iron or something. And, but Oberg, he teed off second to last with Mr. Spieth, who apparently, I don't know, his, did he, he just, everybody said, no, no. You got those three majors, and now you're going to tee off in the worst possible slots from now on. Don't know they're what he did using, wrong. They're, they're using Jordan for TV ratings. He seems to get the late early oh, every man. time. So unfortunate. But but Oberg, Morikawa, and Fleetwood, those three guys, audience, they teed off last and second to last on Thursday. Oberg, Morikawa, Fleetwood. And who's chasing Mr. Scheffler? on Saturday and Sunday, those guys. Now, Darkstar gave me the math. He gave me some Darkstar math, which sometimes is a little hard to follow, but I, I did, I did. He got me there. The Darkstar math on Ober, because he was the closest to contender, right? Give me the math, Yeah, he finished four back. Yep, four back. Well, me, so, just do the math. So On Thursday, Ober. Friday, on Thursday, Friday. Yeah, so he has to, so Thursday, he finishes, he starts on the 12th tee on Friday morning, he plays okay, but he makes a double and a bogey and no birdies on 13 or 15 because he's hitting a rock, a frozen rock. To mowed greens, Friday. to freshly mowed greens. To freshly, yeah, to freshly mowed greens. Well, mm -hmm. I'll get to Spieth in a minute. So <clears throat> he goes through in that same stretch of holes when Scotty Scheffler had warm weather, the winds are dying down, goes four under. So... Let's flip-flop that. Let's say Scheffler has Oberg's tee time. And Scheffler plays those last holes on Friday morning at three over. And Oberg goes four under for that same stretch. That's a 14-shot swing. That's seven better for Oberg and seven worse for Scheffler. In my math, that's a 14-shot swing. That puts Oberg as a 10-shot winner. <laughs> Yeah. Just in case anybody's interested. If it had come together just that way. but And it could have. But let's so say wanted, that you know Scheffler's a great player and Oberg's a rookie, so to speak. So it's not a, the, the all 14 shots, right? You don't just reverse them. But you no, take away obviously. four. Take away four or three from Scotty and yeah. give Oberg three. That's six shot swing. It's the, a four-shot margin. That, it's a four-shot right, margin. Right. So the I'll, real point that we're making is you give Oberg any shots on Scheffler on Sunday starting that back nine, that caddy stands in front of his ball until he says, you're going to play it out on the right on 11. You're not going anywhere near that pin. You're not playing a draw. You play a draw, I'm going to break every club in your bag like Cheech Marin in Tin Cup. Yeah. <laughs> Here, give me that five oh. iron. Here's a six iron. Hit it short and right. <laughs> That's what you're going to do. But I don't want to hit it there. You're going to hit it there. I only get 10% of this. Hit it there. That's where we're going. Yeah. You're going to chip the next one up the green. That's what we're doing. I don't care what you think. <laughs> this is not your so, moment to think. Right. Yeah. And as I said, that really makes what Fleetwood home and Morikawa, in my opinion, just as great as what Scheffler did winning the tournament in the fact that they had the bad weather draw and they were just mentally drained. You could see Morikawa on Sunday was just like every time he missed a putt, it was like the world. It's just like somebody jumped on his back, you know, and it was it was a shame. Amazing that they did as well as they did. And you know I'm not a home of fan. I'm just not. I don't know why. I just but yeah, I, yeah, even I, I had to be like, you know what? He's actually playing pretty darn well. I have to give him some credit, even though I don't want to. But I am. Because I am a thinking person and a fair guy. And I don't, you know, credit where credit's due. He played really well and well, he did have the crummy start times which is a yeah, lot and, and to have, overcome right newfound respect for homa myself I, I completely agree newfound respect and really ah, gosh you think about 12 he got he got a bad kick but the reason he got a bad kick was because he pulled it a little it goes a little longer it doesn't have as much spin it hits firm and bounces into the shrubbery, and he makes double. Boy, I would have loved to see him put a good swing on twelve and you know hang in there to the end, just to you know to see just to see how Scheffler does react because he really 
it's it's sad. The tournament begins on the back nine, but it only was a three hole tournament this year because <laughs> it was over by the twelfth uh, green. After Scheffler doesn't hit it in the water on 12, that, that tournament was over. Yeah. Well, he played great. I mean, it was going to be hard to catch him, but it, it was impossible to catch him uh, if he starts out with a 3-4 shot advantage, you know, because of the, the weather and the tee times. It's just, you just can't, yeah. you can't get past it. I mean, it, it's just, you take any other sport and you're like, well, no, no, you, your first downs are only eight yards. The other guys have to go 10. What? I yeah. mean, you know, any kind of advantage for a pro that's as good as many of these guys is, you know, magnified, obviously. And yeah, is it lucky or is it, you know, they put the names in a hat and pull them out randomly? Uh huh. Yeah. Who knows? Tiger randomly got 26 straight early lates at the PGA. Who knows? Well, let's talk, let's pivot to uh, Mr. DeChambeau, uh, unranked. The unranked Bryson DeChambeau is the way I want to say it from now on. Um, unranked Cam Smith and unranked DeChambeau giving a real run at this number one guy. What cost him the tournament? Because I have very clear vision as to what it was overall. Uh, and well, then specifically go certain into, shots. Yeah, I'm going to go straight into what I discussed. What he really needs to do is to put a normal sized normal grip 60 degree in his bag and learn how to use it with some spin i watched him chip and i'm like God, if i were chipping for dechambeau he'd be 16 under yeah he what is he tournament. doing <laughs> he has to play this he has to play this no wrist straight bump and it's it's i i, I cringe every time i see it it's it's what what is he doing mm-hmm. now he's okay in the sand because he can just dig he can just go straight down and dig and pop the ball up softly and it trickles but it's a simple fix for DeChambeau you either spend more hours on your and you get to be Jack Nicholas or Morikawa with the irons or you just put a regular club in your bag to chip with I mean get some spin on the ball he went to the Titleist I truly uh, truly think one of the great things that happened to him as I've mentioned on a previous show Bridgestone dropping him was the best thing that happened to him because after Bridgestone dropped him, he went on that run last summer, including the 58. And I don't care who you are. You shoot 58, it's still 58. Yeah. And that was with the Titleist golf ball. So I think he's got the correct golf ball now. Well, his driving is world-class um, and his putting is world-class. So, But the middle is missing in a big way. He misses way too many irons. Misses meaning they're five or six yards off target. Too long, too short, a little right, a little left. Obviously, he's still good at it, but he's not as good as he needs to be at a place like Augusta. He just missed greens with that stupid 56 or whatever he's got. He misses nine. Oh, my God. It goes long, and then he's short the next uh, time. To the chipping point, I mean, just look no further than the third hole on the last round. From the primo position, after a perfect drive, yeah, uh, he, <laughs> he, he, you know what? I don't know. He he doesn't chunk it. He he misses it. He fats it a little bit, and and the ball rolls down to the bottom of the it misses the green. And and this is what I, I I kind of when I was showing you about the chipping the one time he has no margin for error. So like when I'm going for a spinning chip, I'm hitting it hard. It lands closer to the hole, spins, and checks. If I chunk that same chip, it lands shorter, but it rolls out. So I have purposely set up my chipping where if I don't make perfect contact, because guess what? I don't play all that much golf. um, I have a margin for error where the ball ends up in the same position a lot of times. Everybody's like, great chip. And I'm like, "Eh, I kind of chunked that. (laughs) That wasn't the way I was supposed to hit it, but it worked out. Yeah, I'd, uh, I, I, I'd like to see him go the iron route. I mean, I think he should do both. I think he should put a regular 60 in there, cause, or at least obviously test it and practice and see if he's any good with it. Maybe he's done that already. Seems like he would have as a tinkerer. But, you know, come on. Do something to fix this chipping a little bit and then really go and spend, uh, you know, a couple of weeks at DJ's house figuring out how DJ went about it. Uh, maybe get DJ's team involved. Uh, how did DJ improve his approach shots to to get him a U.S. Open and a, and a Masters? 
um, because he started hitting a lot closer and he was already maybe the best driver or certainly one of the top three drivers in the game at the time DJ was. So, you know, uh, I'd like to see that. I think that maybe psychologically fits Bryson better to be, you know, that spot on with his irons. Um, and he's got some great guys to go talk to out on live. He certainly, you know, DJ and uh, Sergio, Sergio being a savant at hitting the irons close. Um, and then lots of chipping help, you know, obviously of Cam and two of the best chippers in the world, Cam Smith and, and Patrick Reed are right there and he can have dinner with them anytime he wants, sit, by the, sit on the plane, wherever they're yeah. going. I mean, it's easy when you're on live to get help. Right. And, um, and I don't want to say a lot about Reed, but I will say I did mention I thought he'd backdoor top 10. He bogeys 18 not to do that. However, he was another guy who the bad weather draw crushed him. He had to come out and play 16, 17, 18, and he went bogey, double bogey. If he finishes his round, well, he's potentially four shots better. He's he's a couple under. You know, he's maybe the low live guy if he doesn't get a bad weather draw. So if you'd like more thinking man shows and topics, then subscribe to our audio podcast. That is where you will get at least three new shows every week and topics that will never get to YouTube. And there are a lot of those that we like to talk about that will never get to YouTube. Use the link in the video description below. And thank you again for being a fan.